Today we're going to be working on solving initial value problems uh, using the integrating factor or sometimes called the IF um, method. Alright, so it's, it's simplest if we break it up into a couple of steps. So um, first you're going to put the equation into the form of dy dt plus some function of t times y uh, equals another function of t. And if it can't get into this form, uh, you probably should not be using the integrating factor method. Um, now, second, find uh, the given or find the initial or the integrating factor, um, which you can find by using this equation, um, and multiply uh, both sides of the equation by it. Third, you're going to write the left side as a derivative, um, which usually will be. Um, by using the, an inverse of the product rule, um, which is simply the integrating factor times y. But you'll see that in the examples. Fourth, um, you're going to integrate and solve for y, and uh, then you get your general equation. And if you have initial values, it's an initial value problem. And you could do step five um, to plug in the initial values and solve um, for the constants. Uh, then you just write it back into your y equals equation, and you're good. So let's move into some uh, examples. All right, so now we've got our uh, differential equation as well as our initial value. So we'll go ahead and solve this problem with the integrating factor method. Um, so first things first, uh, we just have to get it in the form of dy dt plus um, some function of t times y equals another function of t. So right here, this negative 3y might not necessarily look like a function of t times y, but it is, right? So it's the exact same as negative 3 um, plus 0t times y. Um, so we can just have uh, this is actually um, a function of t. Um, and it's multiplied by y, so it has to be our f of t, um, or p, sorry, p, p of t times y term. So we'll subtract that over to this side. So we've got dy dt plus 3y equals 5 times e to the 2t. All right, so now good. We're done with step one. We've got our um, equation in the correct form. So um, let's identify um, what we have, right? So this is simply our, our dy dt, obviously, but our p of t um, equals uh, this three, right, because it's the coefficient of the y, um, of the y, and our f of t, which is what everything equals, equals five e to the two t. Okay, so next uh, we're gonna find our integrating factor. So we'll do this over here. Um, we know that the integrating factor equals e to the integral of p of t dt. Um, so we know that p of t is 3, so we just plug that in, and we have e uh, to the integral of 3 dt, um, which integrating is simply e to the 3t. Now don't worry about adding a plus c onto that um, uh, with the integrating factor. So this is good for the integrating factor. This is what you want. Um, all right, so now we multiply both sides of the equation. Uh, by the integrating factor. Okay, so we know it's e to the 3t. So I'm going to erase this to make some more room. Alright, so we've got e to the 3t. We multiply it by both sides. e to the 3t times dy dt plus 3y equals e to the 3t times 5e to the 2t. T. And we can note that e to the 3t, if we bring this into the parentheses, um, can simplify a little easier for us. So this right side actually just equals um, 5e to the 5t. Okay, so um, now uh, we're on to the next step. We're going to um, make sure to write the left side of the equation as a derivative. Um, as of something. Now, in most integrating factor problems, you're going to be able to write it as the derivative of the integrating factor times y. 
Okay, so we'll do that now. DDT times the integrating factor, which is simply e to the 3t, right, times y, um, and that'll equal the right side, which is 5e to the 5t. Okay, um, and right, if we worked this, uh, we could get it back to this. It's this. We're not changing the equation at all, just simply rewriting it as the derivative. Okay, now to, uh, uh, we're gonna simplify this down a bit um, by integrating. So we integrate both sides. Okay, so we have the left side simple, right? These kind of just cancel. Um, we get e to the 3t uh, times y equals the integral of this, um, which uh, we can do some quick chain rule. We'll just run through that really fast, right? So u equals 5t and du equals, um, and uh, du equals uh, 5 dt, so du over 5 equals dt. Okay, so we plug that in um, and we would get 5 e to the u over 5 which taking the integral, right? This is just, again, simple chain rule process um, is just e uh, to the 5t. Okay, so we know the integral. And again, this is just, just the integral of the right side. So we know that the integral of the right side from our little chain rule process over here is e to the 5t. Now, the one thing we don't wanna forget, right, um, is that both of these, um, we have to do, since we don't have limits of integration on either side, both sides have to have a plus t. All right, so I almost forgot that. That's one thing that'll get a lot of people uh, tripped up on these. So it's this, so 5t plus c. All right, so uh, one quick thing, we can simply combine these constants, right, because um, they're, they don't have a value right now, so we can just combine them into a different constant. Um, so if you want to write these as like C1, C2, and they combine into C3, you can. Um, but for simplicity, you can just write them as C. Um, just know that they are not technically the same thing. But um, overall, they end up being essentially, um, it, it's essentially irrelevant from what you call them. So we're just going to combine them. And this is um, the equation that we get. Okay, so I'm just going to erase, make some more room. We'll write it back up here. So we have y e to the 3t equals e to the 5t plus our constant. All right, so um, now we're just going to solve for y. Okay, so um, what do we do? We divide both sides by e to the 3t. So e to the 5t divided by e to the 3t is just e to the 2t. Um, and it's plus c over um, e to the 3t. All right, so now this um, is what we call our general equation, right? So now we've solved for y, um, so now we have it. We, we're, we're done with getting the general solution. But we still have a constant, and if we didn't have an initial value here, we wouldn't be able to solve for it, but since we do, we're going to go ahead and solve for it to get our final form. So um, we know that y of 0 equals 3, so y of 0 equals 3, um, which equals when t is zero, right? Right. So we'll plug in z. Uh, sorry, we'll plug in zero for t. So e to the two times zero plus c, our constant over e to the three times zero. All right. So simplify this down. Anything to the zero is simply one. So it would just be three equals one plus c over one. Um, which we know then c equals 2, right? Okay, so now the problem's done. Uh, all we have to do is plug it back in. So we call upon our general solution, and we just plug in the value for the constant. So we have y equals e to the 2t plus we have 2 for our c value over e to the 3t. All right, and that is the answer to our initial value problem. So we'll move on to another example. Okay, so now we've got our second differential equation. 
Um, and we'll go ahead and solve it using integrating factor method. Um, so first, right, we're gonna put it in the form of dy dt plus a function of t times y equals another function of t. Um, and right, dy dt um, is the exact same as y prime in this case. So uh, y prime, uh, we're gonna have to divide everything by t, right? Uh, to get the y off of the y prime because it's we want the dy dt or the y prime by itself. So y prime plus y over t equals 2t over t, which is just 2 times 1, right? Okay, so here's um, what we've got. So we can, we can tell right now what our p of t and f of t values are. So we're in the correct, uh, we're in the correct form, and we can see that p of t equals one over t, um, because this right here, this y over t, is really just one over t times y. So it's just the coefficient. P of t is just the coefficient of the y, um, which in this case is simply one over t. Okay, so. Um, we also know that the f t is 2. All right, so now we're going to solve for the integrating factor, um, which we'll do up here. And we know that that equals e to the integral of p of t dt. OK, so um, we know p of t, so we just plug that in. e to the integral of 1 over t dt. OK, so this equals um, e to the log of t. And again, we don't add a plus c on there. Um, and this is nice because uh, using log rules, right, we just know that these kind of cancel. And the integrating factor is actually just t. Okay. So next step is we're just going to multiply both sides of the equation by your integrating factor. Um, so we'll erase to make some room. And we know our integrating factor is simply t, right? So we multiply t to the left side and to the right side. Okay. Um, so this cancels, right? So we've just got t y prime plus y equals 2t. Okay, so now we'll just write, all right, so write the next step is to write the left side as a derivative. So we'll go ahead and do that. So d dt. Um, and remember, most of the time when you're writing it as a, as a derivative, it'll just be the integrating factor times y. So we can go ahead and see that that's what we're gonna do here. So it's the integrating factor, which remember was just t times y. And again, we just copy this down, equals 2t. Okay, so we're gonna be solving uh, a little bit more, uh, simplifying a little bit more. Take the integral of both sides, um, and we get ty, um, don't forget the plus c here, equals the integral of this, which is simply t squared, and then plus c, okay? So um, here uh, we've got an even simpler form, and remember we can just combine uh, these c's uh, to make a new constant. So we'll do that, ty equals t squared plus, um, and that's our new constant value. So we'll make some room up here to finish the problem out. So we've got ty equals t squared plus c. Okay, so now we're just solving for y. Um, so obviously we'll just divide by t, so we just have uh, y equals t plus c over t. Okay, so a couple things to note here. First of all, this is our answer, right? So we didn't have an initial value for this one, uh, so this was actually simply solving for a differential equation um, using the integrating factor method, and that we've done. Okay, so if we had an initial value, we could plug it in here. Um, but we don't. So this is what's called the general 
solution. Um, and that's this. So this is our answer. Uh, you might be wondering why can't we just combine this C into a new constant. Um, the only time you can combine a C uh, is when it's C times another constant like 8 um, or you know whatever other number um, or if it's just like two constants plus each other um, or a C plus an 8 or whatever. Um, but if it's multiplied or divided by a T um, which you'll see come up a lot in these initial value and uh, differential equation problems, then you cannot simplify it into a new constant. So this is our generous solution.